My name is Steve Rosenzweig, and I'm a soil scientist at General Mills. This series of four videos will provide an overview on regenerative agriculture. Throughout this series, I'll discuss the major challenges facing farmers and food production, what regenerative ag is and how it can help address these challenges, and also what General Mills is doing to advance regenerative agriculture. In this video, I'll cover the critical challenges facing the food and agricultural system today, which frames why General Mills has decided to focus on regenerative agriculture as a key initiative for the next decade. Almost all the food we eat comes from just a few feet of topsoil, and we're degrading this soil at unsustainable rates. This photo is from a rest stop in Iowa, showing how much topsoil has been lost in that area. Globally, about a third of the world's soil is degraded today, and that's projected to increase to 90% over the next 30 years. We have to reverse these trends if we want to have a stable and resilient food system, and with regenerative ag, we can actually rebuild and restore the function of our soil. The next trend is that biodiversity loss is hurting agriculture. Farms, like any ecosystem, depend on biodiversity, all of the plants, bugs, birds, and other wildlife that live there. Agriculture is one of the biggest threats to biodiversity globally, and loss of biodiversity negatively impacts agriculture because all those creatures perform functions that are critical for food production. Consider pollination, predation of pests, or decomposition. These are all services that we need to grow food, and that's part of what we lose when we lose biodiversity. By focusing on restoring these critical services, regenerative agriculture can help support food production and biodiversity simultaneously. The next challenge is that agriculture remains a major threat to water. Of all of the water used in the U.S., 80% of it is used in agriculture. Reusing water faster than it can be replenished for critical water sources like the Ogallala Aquifer, and climate change will further widen the gap between demand and supply. Water quality trends in the U.S. are mixed. Some regions are improving, and some are getting worse. The Gulf of Mexico, pictured here, is a useful indicator for understanding water quality trends because it drains most of the farmland in the U.S., and water quality there is not improving. What you're seeing here is the dead zone, which is an 8,000 square mile stretch of ocean where pollution from farm fields reduces the oxygen levels in the water, which kills marine life. Regenerative agriculture can keep the soil and nutrients on the farm where they belong, which leads to cleaner water. As a food company, we depend on profitable, resilient farming communities. However, farmers are under mounting economic pressure. This is a graph of the Canadian farm economy with government subsidies subtracted, which gives a more realistic picture of what's happening. The top line shows gross farm revenue. You can see that it's going up because farmers are producing more and more food. The green area going down is actually what farmers get to keep at the end of the day. What's happening is farming is getting more expensive with costs for inputs like seeds, equipment, and chemicals going up, and farmers needing to use more of them to maintain higher yields. Regenerative agriculture can help farmers maintain production while reducing the need for these costly external inputs, which helps them become more profitable and resilient. The final challenge we'll discuss is that the climate impact of agriculture continues to increase, and climate change is already having detrimental effects on agriculture. About a third of the world's greenhouse gas emissions come from the food system, and the vast majority of that comes from ag. This graph shows the global greenhouse gas footprint of agriculture over time. You can see it's increasing, and it will continue to increase if we don't change anything. The dotted line going down shows where we need to get agricultural emissions in order to avoid catastrophic climate change. And unless we solve systemic issues in the food system, like food waste and access, we'll need to reduce emissions while increasing food production to keep up with population growth. And, as climate change is already severely affecting agricultural production through more extreme weather, ag will need to both mitigate and adapt to climate change. You can see that this will be a big challenge that requires a transformative solution. Regenerative ag can be part of this solution by sequestering carbon in soil and reducing reliance on fossil fuel-based inputs, while strengthening farmers' resilience in the face of extreme weather. To help meet this challenge, General Mills has set a science-based target to reduce our footprint from farm to fork to landfill by 30% by 2030. You can see that over half of our footprint is in agriculture, making it the largest opportunity for meeting this goal. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll discuss what regenerative ag is, what it looks like on the ground, and how it can address these critical challenges.